Hi guys, welcome to my channel. So I want to talk about Michael Vaughn. He's a five-year-old boy who has been missing since July 27th. He was last seen wearing a light blue Minecraft shirt, size four to six, black spandex boxer briefs with lime green trim and a lime green Minecraft character, also known as Creeper on the left leg of the spandex boxers. So the character, the, the Minecraft character is on the left leg of the boxers. Dark blue flip-flops, size 11. That'd be boys size 11, because he's only a five-year-old little boy. He was last seen near the crossroads of Southwest 9th Street in Arizona, in Fruitland, Idaho. So I had talked about this when it first happened. And I've been wanting to make a video on it and get Michael's face out there again. And it's just taking me this long to do it. I feel bad. But please, you guys, please remember his face. Look at these pictures. If you see anything, anything that could lead authorities to Michael, please call. Call in the tip line. Um, Let me get a phone number for you here. Anyone with information is urged to contact the Fruitland Police Department at 208 642-6006, extension zero, or contact the department through their tip line at findmichael at fruitland.org. So I don't know if you remember, but I did do a live stream on this case right after it happened. We watched the first press conference together, and like I said, I'm going to play the second one here in a minute. His mom, Brandy, and his dad, Tyler, were both at the first press conference. So we watched that together and, and talked about it. And he's still missing, guys. It's been now, what, like 117 days or something like that that he's been missing since July 27th. So there was a new press conference that I'm going to play for you here in a minute. And Michael's mom, Brandy, gets up there and says some nice things about Michael and just, you'll, you'll see. It's it's so sad. It's so sad. It's, oh. Wow, it's hard to watch. It really is because it's just, you could just see the toll that this has taken on her and she's so desperate to find him. So please, you guys, anything, anything that stands out in your mind at all, like look at, look at his, look at his face right now. He could be anywhere at this moment. He doesn't have to necessarily be in Idaho. I mean, they, they really think now since they've searched all of the area and they really are thinking he was abducted now. So his abductor could have taken him out of state. So just keep your eyes open for him. Like I said, he has blonde hair, blue eyes. He's 3'7", about 50 pounds. His name's Michael, but he goes by Monkey. That's his nickname. I know I'm just repeating myself, but I just want to make sure that all the little details are clear in your head and you remember them. So let me read you uh, one of the more current articles and then we'll watch the press conference. And then I do want to play a little video that Brandy shared of her and Michael baking. It's so cute, but that'll also give you a look on, you know, his mannerisms, what he looks like, you know what I'm saying? How he moves, how he, just his mannerisms and stuff. So if you would see him and, and they did disguise him in some way, dye his hair, cut his hair, made him look different in any way. Way, at least you kind of could see his mannerisms and how he moves and walks and, and and how he talks his voice you get to hear his voice so that could be very helpful and also his facial expressions and stuff so that's it is really important actually I mean just watch it you might not realize what you were gaining by watching it but if you would happen to see him you might recognize something that you are picking up from watching this video that you otherwise wouldn't have maybe recognized, you know? Maybe something would just click if you see something familiar that you may become aware of after watching this video. So yeah, I just think it is important. So please stick around and watch the press conference, watch the video of Brandy and Michael because he's still missing. So I mean, it is really important to, to be familiar with, like I said, what he looks like, how he moves, everything, how he walks, how he talks, just so you could be familiar if you do see anything. Okay? Okay. So let me read this article real quick. Okay. So it's been nearly four months since five-year-old Michael Joseph Vaughn disappeared from his family's neighborhood in Fruitland, where the police say the search for the boy remains their top priority. So there is a reward for information leading to Michael's safe return for $50,100, and it is available until March 31st of 2022. So if you have any information that could help lead to Michael's safe return, there's a reward for you, $50,100. So between the day Michael was reported missing, July 27th, and Thursday, November 18th, 
Huff said 557 tips have been received from literally around the globe, and each was assigned to investigators for follow-up. Several tips have borne fruit, but they just don't go anywhere, Huff said in Thursday's press briefing, which like I said, we're going to watch that here in a minute. Michael was last seen at about 6.30 p.m. July 27th around Southwest 9th Street. A missing endangered alert went out less than two hours later. Huff said that the crews searched close to 1,000 acres this week in just the latest of multiple searches in and around the neighborhood where Vaughn was last seen. Search areas included the front and backyards of nearly all of the homes on Southwest 9th, as well as farmland near Southwest 9th, and another large plot of land between Nevada Avenue and U.S. Highway 95. Fruitland police are still asking for help to identify the driver of a white Honda Pilot seen leaving the area of Southwest 8th Street at around 6.47 p.m. on July 27th. They are also looking to identify a man with dark hair wearing a white t-shirt and black shorts seen walking in that area around the same time. Huff said they're not considered suspects at this time. They may have seen something, we just don't know what that is until we talk to him, Huff said. Michael was in an open field adjacent to his home in Fruitland, about 50 miles west of Boise on the Oregon border, when he disappeared on the evening of July 27th. It is unclear at this time what the five-year-old was doing in that location at the time. Idaho Mountain Search and Rescue and the FBI searched acres of rural land, 29 miles of riverbank, drained two irrigation runoff ditches, reviewed security footage from the area... Searched hundreds of homes, looked through garbage cans, drained a septic tank, interviewed everyone in the surrounding area. So this was all done like at the beginning when it first happened. Canine dogs, divers, drones with infrared imaging capabilities, helicopters, paragliders, kayaks have been deployed in the search for the missing boy. The dive team searched a pond near the Vaughn family home. Chief Huff appealed to homeowners residing near the area where Michael was last seen to inspect their properties, outbuildings, and vehicles, any place where a child could hide or get stuck in, and review security footage. So they're trying to cover all bases, you know, if, they're, if you just got stuck somewhere. So there was a post on Facebook. I remember going over this when, right after it first happened when we uh, talked about it and kind of went through the GPS map to see if we could figure out where Michael was going. I'm not sure if it's been confirmed that this really happened or this is exactly how it happened, but what they were talking about said the last person to see Michael was a neighbor across the street. Jen was the third to last. The neighbor opposite a monkey's house was the second to last. Jen walked him around the corner. He then went to the other direct neighbor. She told him she could come back if it was okay with his mom. Less than 20 feet to his door, she closed her door since he was in the, his yard. At some point shortly after, he was then seen running down the block towards the corner across the street from the second neighbor. Didn't think much of it as there are other children on the adjacent block. Figured he was running down to play with them. So, and then that goes back to the, them saying that they saw him in a field or, or that he was in the field and that was the last place. He was seen, so I don't know. It makes you wonder, was he being chased by somebody? He was running. Did he make it to his yard and then somebody chased him? Or was somebody calling for him? So I don't know. I mean, it's, it's, it's a mystery. And I, I just hope somebody could help us out in some way. And somebody sees something or saw something that just clicks in their head where they could call the tip line and, and let them know. So, all right. So now I'm going to play you the press conference. And then following that, I'm going to play the video that Brandy uploaded of her and Michael. Thanks for coming. I appreciate having everybody here today. Uh, I'd just like to introduce uh, those who I have up here with me today. I've got Captain Matt Sly with the Idaho State Police. And I've got uh, Supervising Agent Doug Hart with the Federal Bureau of Investigation. And then I also have joining us today the mother of Michael Joseph Vaughn, Brandy Neal. Thanks for being here with us today. We appreciate you. Um, I want to start out by thanking our friends from the media for being here and giving us another opportunity to get this, to get Michael back in the headlines and at the forefront. Michael's case has impacted everyone who has heard about it, but likely not as much as it, as it has uh, impacted Brandy, uh, Tyler, Michael's family, and the law enforcement officers working day in and day out to find him. I want to express my sincere thanks to you all for being here and covering the updates that we have for you today. The search for Michael will not stop until he's found, and the search remains very active. As I've said to the public, the effort may look a little bit different from time to time, but those of us in law enforcement leading the search and the investigation, Michael's on the top of our mind, he's our top priority, and finding him is an intense daily part of our lives. 
Michael Joseph Vaughn was last seen near his residence on Southwest 9th Street at approximately 6.30 p.m. Tuesday, July 27th, 2021. The first missing and endangered child alert went out at 8.20 p.m. with four different alerts to email, phone calls, text messages being issued to the area residents until 11.20 p.m. that night. Michael's image and information went out to law enforcement nationwide and a database called the National Center for um, Crime, or the National Crime Information Center. And Michael has also been entered in the state of Idaho missing person clearinghouse. From the time of notification, an exhaustive search effort and criminal investigation began simultaneously. So our ground searches are based on the highest probability that Michael may have wandered off, potentially gotten hurt, stuck in an irrigation ditch, a swimming pool, uh, an outbuilding, an old appliance, a junk vehicle, anywhere a 50 pound curious boy uh, could hide himself. We wanted to make sure that all the ground within a one to two mile radius from Southwest Knight Street where, where Michael lives has been searched by residential homeowners, professional searchers, law enforcement, and specifically trained canines. And not just one of these groups, but by all of these groups. As such, We've been conducting these searches continuously, even up to this week. On Monday of this week, the Idaho Mountain Search and Rescue with specialty canines and the Fruitland Police Department conducted searches in the front and backyards of nearly all the homes on Southwest 9th Street, as well as another large acreage off of Northwest 1st Street in between Nevada and, and, and Highway 95. On Tuesday, the Idaho Mountain Search and Rescue with their specialty canines with the Fruitland Police Department, the Idaho State Police, who had a drone in the air, and the FBI, we methodically searched the farm ground to the southeast and southwest of Southwest 9th Street. And combined, we, we, we searched close to 1,000 acres this week. Why would we continue to search areas that have been searched multiple times before? Well, because we haven't found Michael yet, and conditions change. So further, you can imagine going home every night as a law enforcement officer wondering you know, did we miss something during that search? Michael, Brandy, and Tyler, and the community continues to count on us to keep up the search, and that is why we continue to search. And I've said from the beginning that as long as those resources are available, we will continue to ask for them. Remember that a criminal investigation, that happened at the same time of notification as the time that Michael went missing. And due to the fact that we've conducted multiple searches using every tool available to us with no success, it increases the possibility that Michael was abducted. From the beginning until, I guess, until we find Michael, we're considering every possibility and following up on every lead developed, every tip that comes in, and the total number of tips that we've received to date is over 557. And the majority of those tips have been cleared by investigation. The others are currently being worked on. Word of our search has gone worldwide, and tips on where he might be have come in from literally around the globe. Thanks to resources available to us again, every tip, regardless of how many miles away, is going to be followed up on. We're committed, and we work together to support each other. Every day we come to work, we work through the exhaustion, um, it, for investigators, there's always highs and lows. Each day we go through these highs and lows, and I can't tell, but what I can tell you is, I can tell you with certainty that the Fruitland Police Department and our law enforcement partners are using every resource available, and we'll continue to look into every possibility until we know exactly what happened. We're steadfast in our commitment to bringing Michael home safely. I want to thank each and every search member the search teams that have been out here, and each and every investigator for their time and expertise and the commitment they've put into helping us bring Michael home. We also want to emphasize Michael's family who continues to be fully cooperative, working closely with us on, on almost a daily basis. We ask the community to continue to respect their privacy. As for the reward for Michael, um, the reward for Michael's safe return remains in effect, uh, and it's increased the amount uh, has increased to $50,100. And that's for anyone having information to the, uh, leading to the safe return of Michael. And that'll be available until March 31st, 2022. I should also note that Michael's family has made considerable contributions to this reward fund. 
as have members of the, of the community. And every donation that we've, we've, we've pulled in has been um, appreciated. I'm gonna to continue to update our Facebook page periodically during the course of this investigation. I'll continue to do so if we have some significant developments and our efforts to keep, keep the community uh, informed as the best we can. And so with that, at this time, I'd like to introduce uh, Michael's mother, Brandy. Brandy is representing the, Braun, the Vaughn family today and she would like to um, give a statement, so. Brandy. Hello everyone. I wanna thank you for all being here today. My name is Brandy Neal and I am Michael Joseph Vaughn's mama. I am here before all of you today on behalf of my family to speak about Michael as much in everyone in our family wants to be up here in front of all of you today, I am here to speak on all of our behalf. I am here to ask you all, I'm here to ask you please, please for your help. I am here to ask you to please keep Michael's face, his name and his story in every one of your hearts, your eyes, and your minds. It has been 115 days, 115 days, he has not been home. And we need every one of you. I need you. I need your help to bring my baby home. I need you to see his beautiful smile. I need you to see how happy he is. That smile was one of our most favorite camping trips. He, he got to see his first beaver dam and he got to catch so many frogs that day and he was so excited. his beautiful blue eyes. He was so happy that day because I promised we would go get ice cream cones. And he laughed so hard because his baby sister got to have her first ice cream cone and it was everywhere. We got to play at the park that whole day. It was warm, it was sunny, and we played catch we played football until it got dark. I need you. I need your help, please. I need you to know how much Michael is loved. I need you to know how much he is missed. Our family is broken without him. We miss his laughs, his smiles. We miss his hugs. I need you to know He is such a sweet, fun, exciting little boy. He brings such joy and love to our family and everyone that he knows and that knows him. Michael has a laugh that is beyond contagious. You can't help but smile and laugh when you hear his laugh. We need him home. I, I am asking for your help. I am asking for everyone's help. 
please, please, if you know anything, if you know anything at all, if you know something, please, I am begging. This is my baby. This is my son. I need him home. I want him home. Please, I need your help to bring him home. I want to thank all of the community and the extended communities and everyone who continues to keep Michael in your thoughts, in your prayers, and in your eyes. Please keep sharing his picture. Please, any information to help bring my son home. I want to thank the Fruitland Police Department, the state, FBI, I want to thank all of them for their continued support. They have become family, and they are his son too. So please, please, please help me. Please help me bring my baby home. Please keep us in our, please keep us all in your prayers. Anything, please help. Please help us bring our baby home. Thank you, Brandy. So at this time, um, I'll take a few questions. Go ahead. Uh, sir, what are some of the more credible tips that you folks have received? I know you said you got nearly 600, but have any, uh, bore any fruit to any extent so far? Um, I will tell you that several of them have bore fruit, but they just, um, they just don't go anywhere. So um, as far as credible tips, uh, we've, we've received several credible tips. We work on those every single day. Um, we just find that they take us nowhere at the end of the day. So those are the highs and lows that we talk about. So um, that, that, that's about all I can say about that. Is there any update with the white Honda Pilot and the mail update that you guys had in that surveillance camera that you put on Facebook a few weeks ago? There is um, no update on that. We still have not located the driver of the white Honda Pilot or that individual that we've seen walking down through the park uh, right about that time frame, uh, as I've described in the past. Do you believe that uh, this car or this person may be a suspect in this at all or have any information? I don't, uh, but we certainly need to identify them uh, just due to the fact that they were in the area uh, around the time that Michael went missing. Um, they may have seen something. We just don't know that uh, until we talk to them. Any other individuals um, you guys are seeking for information or suspect? Uh, not at this time. Uh, we're still coming through, um, you know, large amounts of data uh, to try to come up with new leads. Um, and, uh, you know, once we do, if we need the public's help in identifying that, then we'll certainly reach out to you guys. Have there been any areas that have been ruled out? Um, so I understand your question. Are you talking about uh, areas of, um, like, ground or what? Ground, um, search, just anywhere. Um, yeah, I think that, uh, you know, as we move forward and, you know, we've had uh, multiple searches, multiple canines, professionals, law enforcement, um, all over this ground around within that one to two mile radius, like I said, um, you know, it would lead us to believe that uh, there's a possibility that he was abducted. So as we continue to kind of work through this process, and eliminate these possibilities, um, you know, that's where, we're, that's where we're led. Is there any sense of increased urgency now that winter is approaching with the change in weather, the change in conditions to the search that you guys are dealing with? Right? Well, yes, there is, and that's exactly why we um, conducted another search this week, as a matter of fact. So the change in weather, the change in conditions, uh, we wanted to make sure that we were out there and we had professionals with eyes on the ground at every inch. Uh, to make sure that that ground was covered before the snow flies. So, hey, Corey. Uh, has Michael's name been registered on the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children site? Yes, it has, with, with Nick Mech, yes. Right, and if, with your permission, may I ask a question of Randy? How? No, uh, no? no you, can, you need to direct those questions okay. toward me. Yeah. We've been curious at the newspaper how this is affecting how they plan to spend the holidays together. 
Yeah, well, as you can imagine, um, the holidays under these circumstances, Corey, are going to be extremely tough um, for the family. So, and as, 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 as law enforcement partners, we're going to continue to lift them up and stand right beside them and uh, help them get through these tough times. So, and I would ask that the community help us with that as well. And as the community continues to be invested in this case, um, I know it's reached states all over the country. Are there any partner agencies? I mean, we have the FBI, we have uh, Idaho State Police. Is there any other partner agencies, uh, maybe in Oregon or in Utah, that you guys have been in contact with? You know, we've had um, agencies from outside this state. Um, uh, multiple local law enforcement agencies help us with this. Um, you know, some of the states, we've had California, Alabama, um, Utah, um, several uh, law enforcement agencies helping us with this. And as we get these t tips that are out of state, we'll continue to recruit more help um, when it comes to finding Michael. So, yeah. I know you said the family's been very cooperative uh, with police so far in the search. Um, you mentioned earlier in the conference that the likelihood of this being an un of abduction seems to be a little greater at this point. Uh, what has the search been like with the relatives and extended family? Have you folks spoken at all with them? Yes, we have. We've spoken to them through um, Brandy and, and Tyler. And, um, you know, it just, um, I will tell you, it just, you know, we're where we're at. It didn't yield. It's not yielding. So is, is that your, is that what you're asking me? If, yes, if you got any leads from aunts, uncles, grandparents. Yeah, we have not at this point. So. Okay, um, I think we're going to conclude. Thank you for coming. I appreciate you guys. Thank you. Nothing else with that hand. You can only touch with this hand, okay? Okay. Okay, touch one. Okay, touch the pan. Can you feel hot at that is? Stay back in the stove. It doesn't feel hot! Yeah, but it'll feel hot. Pick it up. Oh, okay, stay back, stay back. No, my cookies! Yeah. We made, we made real homemade cookies. Can you touch uh, them? Uh, uh, uh. Don't touch with the other hand. Aww. If so I could grab one. Now we've got. You gotta let them rest. Aww. I gotta let the cookies rest. Yeah, because it's hot. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm gonna put two of those on so. Okay. Can you put two of those on? Put your glove on. Okay. Got your glove? Let me carry it and we'll put them on the cooling pan. Yeah, cooling pan. What's a cooling pan? Or the cooling rack? Yeah, get down. Okay. Now go. Got your glove? Yep. Okay. Can you touch the other? No, don't touch the cookies. We touch the pan. Oh. Put that glove on. Don't touch anything else. Don't, no. There you go. All right, look at you. Okay, we'll set it up here. Okay, we'll take our glove off and let that cool for a few minutes, okay? No, I gotta keep my glove on <laughs> so I can grab the homemade cookie, okay? Okay. I need the arm one on, too. You have two gloves? You ta da da Look, I made real cookies. <laughs> 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 